This week on Maker Update, an Alexa-powered L3 droid, a pedal-powered art machine, a robot snake, robot bread, an FPV rover, last call for cocktail robotics, and creative clamping techniques. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to Maker Update. This is a show I've been doing for a few years now on my own channel, but this is my first time hosting it on the Make channel. Basically, the idea is I comb through the internet looking for the coolest projects, and then once a week I come here to share them with you. I hope you're into it. If you are into it, you can leave me a thumbs up. And let's get started with the project of the week. Patrick Stefanski created this 3D printed animated robot head modeled after the L3 droid from Solo. To bring the droid to life, he's using a single servo to tilt the head up and down and an LED in one eye that turns on when the head is up. Patrick is using an Arduino triggered by a Raspberry Pi to drive the servo and LED. The Pi is in there because it's running Amazon voice services turning it into an Alexa, but better because you can define L3 as a custom wake word instead of having to say Alexa. Patrick also configured it so that once it wakes up, it answers back in an appropriately sassy female British accent. L3. What? What time is it? It's 1.23 p.m. It's a great project, and you can find a GitHub link to it and all the code and 3D print files down here in the show notes. It's time for some news. This past week, Hackaday announced the 20 winners of their Robotics Module Hackaday Prize. These are projects that can be easily incorporated into larger robot designs. The winners include 3D printed actuators, brushless motors designed into circuit boards, robot arms, prototyping systems, mowing modules for farm robots, and more. A Hackaday post collecting the winners is included here in the show notes. It's time for more projects. A lot of robot projects this week for some reason but let's start off with an art machine. Babette Hendricks has an instructable up showing this bike-powered machine that randomly tosses paint and marbles over a clamped down t-shirt. Aside from the bike frame, the design is mostly made of wood and it looks like a fun activity to have at a kid's birthday party or a summer camp or a local children's museum. Now for more robots, back on Hackaday, Will Donaldson has the details for building a slithering robot snake. The body is made from a bunch of servos mounted into 3D printed links. An Arduino Nano controls the servo motion. The tricky part is powering the whole thing. The cable you see coming off the end of the snake goes out to a bench power supply, sending out five volts at 20 amps. It's very cool though, and a little creepy. For something far more approachable, Becky Stern has a guide up on making a robot from a baguette. Made for an interactive show at the NYC Resistor Hacker Collective titled Self-Driving Carbs, Becky's Breadbot is a riff on a simple robot design by Randy Serafin. Each wheel is really a continuous rotation servo that's had its controller chip removed. It's a cheap way to make a geared DC motor that you can run from batteries plus you get all the neat servo shaft attachments. Randy made this original design in a little plastic tub, but I think we can all agree that a baguette makes a superior enclosure. That said, I'll forgive Marcus Pertz for not using bread for this 3D printed remote control FPV rover. This is a tank tread design with a wireless camera system on the front and back, plus servos to tilt the cameras up and down, and I think there's even an infrared LED on the front for a night vision mode. This looks like so much fun, maybe even more fun than a baguette robot. Sorry, Becky. I have a few tips to share. First, the call for makers is now open for Maker Faire New York, World Maker Faire. The fair takes place September 22nd and 23rd at the New York Hall of Science. If you're into cocktail robots, either making them or drinking from them, the grand challenge of cocktail robotics is happening at the DNA Lounge in San Francisco on Sunday, July 15th, and there's still time to enter a robot. Have you ever heard of a MixQuick? It's an attachment for a reciprocating saw that turns it into a spray paint can shaker. Personally, I don't know if it's any good, but I learned about it when I saw artist Tom Sachs put one to use on Instagram. That's endorsement enough for me. I also did a little digging around and found some 3D printed designs on Thingiverse for shaking small model paint bottles. Over on MakeZine.com, Gareth Branwin's Tips of the Week column includes a tip on using Plastidip spray on EVA foam from Kamui Cosplay. There's also a great overview of creative clamping from Barb Norin of Barb Makes Things. Maker Fairs this weekend, we have Prague in the Czech Republic, Kansas City, Missouri, Tagig, Philippines, and Honolulu, Hawaii. If one's near you, go check it out. 
And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe to Make's channel if you're not subscribed already. We'll also include a link to my channel here where you can catch up with the back catalog of Maker Updates if you're curious. And if you want Maker Update video links and show notes emailed out to you every week automatically, you can join the Maker Update email list and there will be a link for that down here too. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.